go. I'm Lipo, the go Mike. Australian method again and so I thought we'd highlight some famous people from Australia Hugh Jackman famous movie star also known as you know the Wolverine all right that's the first one so let's take a look here we are going to solve this equation by factoring all right so it gives us a little tip here it says make sure the square term is positive so our square term is this and right now it is positive so I'm not going to really move it. I'm going to move everything to the same side. So I need to get this equal to zero because we have to use this zero product property. And that means that I can have all my stuff on one side and equal to zero, okay? And when I have multiple things equal to zero, I set each of those things equal to zero. So let's take a look. So let's subtract 4n, get it to this side. Let's add three to both sides. So really now we're looking at the equation n squared minus four n plus three equals zero. Now remember when you factor, it's best if you put it in standard uh, form, highest exponent, next highest exponent, and so forth, because you're going to have to solve and factor. And so we need two numbers, our a times our b. So the two numbers we're multiplying to, our key numbers is gonna be three, and it has to add to b. b is that number with the middle of the n, so that's negative 4. So, two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to negative 4. Now, remember, Australian method, we have our, uh, we're going to put our first things in here, n and n. We have an extra factor of 1. Okay, now remember, extra factor of 1, that really doesn't count, so I'm not going to even write it. So, Two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to negative 4, negative 3 and negative 1. So now I have two factors, factor n minus 3 and factor n minus 1, and they equal 0. The first thing I should do is I should do a quick check. n times n is n squared. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. It looks like it's going to work. So now I'm going to take each factor because this could be 0. n minus 3 could be 0 or this factor. I know it's a lot of stuff, but it's a factor. A factor is anything that multiplies times something else. n minus one equals zero. So I have two factors, because I know that if I multiply two things and it equals zero, one of these two things has to be zero. That's the only number that it works that way, all right? So now I'm gonna solve them. I'm gonna add three on both sides here. So n could be three. Going to add 1 over here on both sides. n could be 1. Right there we have our two answers. All right. If you wanted to, you could plug them in and check it yourself. Uh, 3 squared is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. Minus 3 is 9, and it checks. Plug in 1. 1 squared is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Minus 3 is 1, and it checks. All right. So that is solving by factoring. Here's the next famous uh, Australian actor. This guy's from Thor. Is this Chris Hemsworth? I forget. There's two brothers. You guys probably know who they are. All right. So now um, 7a squared plus 2a equals 5. Uh, we want to make sure that we can solve this. So get everything on the same side. In general, always keep the square term positive. All right, keep it positive. So I'm going to get, move this over here. 7a squared plus 2a. I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides. So minus 5 equals 0. So let's see, what are my two numbers? I need to multiply to negative 35, a times c, and I need to add to the middle 2. All right, so we have 7a and 7a equals zero, and we have to put it all over seven because we know we have an extra factor of seven. So what are two numbers that multiply to negative 35 and add to two? Well, positive seven and negative five multiply to negative 35 and add to two. 
So let's see, is there a common factor? Yep. So 7 times a plus 1, 7 divided by, or 7a divided by 7 is a, 7 divided by 7 is 1. No common factors here, so I'm just going to bring it down. So these are going to cancel. So really we have our two factors. Here's one factor, and here's the other one. So let's, let's set the first one equal to 0. a plus 1 could equal 0, using that zero product property. So subtract 1, and a could equal negative 1. This is my other factor, 7a minus 5 equals 0. Add 5 to both sides. 7a equals 5. Divide by 7. And then we get a equals 5 over 7. Now, a lot of you have a tendency of wanting to put that in your calculator and give me a decimal. Number one, this is going to be a pretty nasty decimal. Number two, as hard as this is to believe, kids make mistakes going from here to giving me a decimal. All right? And if you make a mistake from, from here to there and make it a decimal, then it's wrong. Keep it here. It's one less thing you have to do. I know you guys don't like fractions, but... I didn't have to do anything to the fraction. I just divided 5 divided by 7 and kept it as a fraction, okay? Really, I think you should get used to doing that. All right, the next famous I'll show me have is Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. Crikey! It's a big one! Oh, so beautiful! Don't know if you guys ever watched him on the Animal Planet or whatnot. I, that guy's awesome. Uh, so, we want to find the zeros of a function. Remember, finding the zero is when y equals zero. And function notation is just f of x is the same as y. And so if we use h of x or g of x, it's the same thing. So I'm going to find the zero of this function. All right. So I need to factor two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. So let's take a look. We know we're going to have 3x on top twice even though we know it's wrong, but we're not worried that it's wrong because we're going to divide by that extra factor of 3. So now, what are two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2? Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, and negative 5 plus 2 is negative 2. Let's see, do I have any common factors in 3x and 5? No, I don't, so I'm going to keep 3x minus 5. Do I have any common factors here? Yes, I do, so I'm going to divide by 3 x plus 1, and then look here, 3's cancel, so I know that this first factor could equal 0, so 0 could equal 3x minus 5, or x plus 1 could equal 0. So let's solve this, add 5 to both sides, 3x equals 5, divide by 3, and again I'm just going to leave it as a fraction, 5 thirds. So that's one possibility, or subtract one over here, x could equal negative 1. So hopefully you're noticing when we solve these, we have two answers now. When we solve the equations linear, we had one answer. Here we have two answers, and check this out. Here's y. If you were to graph this, and this is y equals 0, when we find the zeros, y equals 0, there is going to be, a, it is going to cross at 5 thirds, but let's say here and here. And it's going to look like this kind of. And we'll talk more about that in unit 12, all right? But that's why it's called finding the zeros. That's where the graph crosses the y equals 0 line, the x-axis, all right? Let's try another one. Oh, some more famous Australians. Maybe you don't know these people. Kate Blanchett. This guy is Thor's brother. I think he's in those Mockingjay books. I don't know. And then these two guys are older guys that are kind of have gotten off the, you know, they're crazy. They were big stars when I was in high school and college. Mel Gibson and uh, Russell Crowe. They've kind of gone crazy. So we want to find the zeros. When I find the zeros, I take my Y, my F of X, and I make it zero. And now we're going to factor. So we need two numbers that multiply to one time, two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 5. 
Now remember, plug in my x in here. I have a factor of one. I don't need to divide by a factor of one. When I have that one, it's easy, one less step. So what are two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative five? Negative eight and positive three. Negative eight times three is negative 24. Negative eight plus three is negative five. So zero equals x minus eight, or zero equals x plus three. I'm gonna add eight to both sides here. So x could be eight. Gonna subtract three over here. So x could be negative three. And I know one thing I've been glossing over and I'm terrible at this. Do a quick check, x times x is x squared. Negative eight times three is negative 24. All right, it's a good thing to get in the habit of doing. I'm bad at it, I'm sorry. Our last famous people from Australia. I don't know how many of you grew up with these guys. The Wiggles, but I had some nieces and nephews who watch this every time I was at their house and it would drive me crazy. These guys are absolutely absurd. So pause the video right now, try these on your own. All right, let's try them. So I'm gonna keep this square term positive. So I'm gonna uh, subtract 11C to both sides and I'm gonna add five. All right, so now I have zero equals 2c squared minus 11c plus 5. So my two numbers need to multiply to 10 and add to negative 11. So let's see what we got here. So 2c in the front, and since that's a 2, I know I have an extra factor of 2 I'm going to need to divide by. All right, two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to negative 11. How about negative 1 and negative 10? Negative 1 times negative 10 is, negative, uh, is positive 10 and adds a negative 11. No common factor there, so we're going to leave that. 2c minus 1. But we do have a common factor here, don't we? We're going to take a 2 out. So this will be c minus 5. And then I can cancel those. Quick check. 2c times 1c is 2c squared. Two, uh, negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. So it looks like it should be good. So this factor could equal 0, 2c minus 1 could equal 0, or this factor, c minus 5 could equal 0. So I'm going to add 1, 2c equals 1, divide by 2, c equals 1 half. Over here, I'm going to add 5 to both sides, and I get c equals 5. Boom. Find the zero, so we're going to take this and make it a zero. So zero equals x squared plus 13x minus 48. So it's a one, so two numbers that multiply to negative 48 and add to 13. All right, so let's see here. My leading coefficient's a one, so I have a little less work to do this time. I'm not going to do that one step where I cancel out because I cancel out on one. So let's see here, uh, 16 times negative three is negative 48, and 16 plus negative three is 13. So that looks like it works. Set them equal to zero. So I'm gonna add three to both sides, so x could equal three. I'm going to subtract 16, x could equal negative 16. There you have it, all right? So that's factoring. Uh, found this song on the internet. It's teaching me how to factor. So hopefully you enjoy it. Good luck on the mastery check, and I will see you on the flip side. Hey. Hey. Teach me how to factor. Hey. Could be like Schultz. What? Can you teach me how to factor? You know why? Cause all the students after. And hey. All I need is a real good quadratic And for you, you, you to back me up and check it Get it Get your terms lined up, make them high to low Look for a GCF, that's something everyone should know We got two terms and a minus in the middle Now we cooking, like flipping bacon on a griddle Okay Both the digits gotta be perfect squares 1, 4, 9, 16, 25 Over here, D-O-S All the students trying to get it You gotta recognize when I spit it All day Set up two sets Put an X in each, minus here, plus there. Listen when I teach, I make the class shine bright when we start to do it. 
this one's a piece of cake, so I had to do it. Teach me how to factor. Teach me, teach me how to factor. Teach me how to factor. Teach me, teach me how to factor. Everybody factor. Every, everybody factor. Everybody factor. Check my work when I factor. Teach me how to factor. Teach me, teach me how to factor. Teach me how to factor. Teach me, teach me how to factor. Everybody factor. Every, everybody factor. Everybody factor. Check my work when I factor. I'm Mr. Winner. Yeah. Growing up on a tractor. Uh -uh. You know I'm from Greenville, but I teach you how to factor. Yes, sir. Step up in my class and all the students hear me. If you got three terms and a plus in the back, I hear the class screaming like, hey, this is whack. These signs must be the same when you follow the flow. No. They like, how you do that when I factor on the floor? <laughs> Set up two sets, put an X in both. The signs in the middle will be showing up the most three terms. And a plus in the back Your signs will double up like a Wendy's double stack I take this to the class when I show them how to factor Teach me how to factor Teach me, teach me how to factor Teach me how to factor Teach me, teach me how to factor Everybody factor Every, Everybody factor Everybody factor Check my work when I factor Teach me how to factor Teach me, teach me how to factor Teach me how to factor Teach me, teach me how to factor Everybody factor Every, Everybody factor Everybody factor Check my work when I factor to the class, you know I really like the factor. The roots of the quadratic, yeah, that's what I'm after. GCF first, then for to check your work. We got one more case, so we have to take a look. We bought the factor, get an answer with two signs. This one's the hardest, so listen to my rhymes. If you got three terms and a minus at the end, the signs will be different where they go, that depends. The larger of your numbers gets the sign from the middle. This problem's not too bad if you study just a little. Now pick up your pencil, I don't want to hear you fussing. Teacher, swear I got them students with the brains all a-busting. Nah, you really gotta get this lesson. This problem's hot, we just took it out the math oven. I like to factor and get everybody working. I yell, yeah, we do it. And now Everybody factors. Teach me how to factor. Teach me, teach me how to factor. Teach me how to factor. Teach me, teach me how to factor. Everybody factor. Every, everybody factor. Everybody factor. Check my work when I factor. Teach me how to factor. Teach me, teach me how to factor. Teach me how to factor. Teach me, teach me how to factor. Everybody factor. Every, everybody factor. Everybody factor. Check my work when I factor.